Good evening, everybody. And welcome to this first uh, of our Sunday night Lenten Vespers. Some of you may be thinking, what in the world are Vespers? That sounds like something you wear that ain't got any sleeves in it. Um, but Vespers is just a reference uh, to the hour of prayer, actually, that occurs usually right around sundown. And uh, it's a word is about as old as uh, any liturgical word in the church. And so over the next few um, weeks on these Sunday nights in Lent, we're going to be doing uh, a really sort of simple order of worship. And hopefully all of you grabbed a, uh, grabbed a copy of that on your way in. Uh, a lot of it <coughs> is very participatory, if that's a word. You'll be doing uh, some responding. There'll be some people doing some reading. I'll speak very briefly. But there'll be some times for prayer and those sorts of things. Uh, it'll be a relatively brief service. I don't plan on being too long-winded in anything I say except for right now. Um, but it is something I, I, that, that I think is, is good for us in the season of Lent to have a more sort of uh, intimate approach to worship on these Sunday nights as we gather together. And so every night uh, we will begin our time with an invocation. Uh, it will likely be a, a written one that I, will, uh, that, we will, that I will pray for us. Then we'll have a responsive reading, a hymn you see there, a reading from the Hebrew script. If you've got a passage, it probably says form. So I get three typos a month. I think I'm over it now. Um, there'll be some words for reflection, words for you to listen to, to sort of uh, digest, uh, words from the New Testament, and then a short homily, which is not what we make grits out of, but is really just an abbreviated uh, sermon of sorts. And then a time for reflection. And I've written on there um, that you'll have some silent time of reflection. That's just you being silent to yourself, maybe praying, meditating, or if you're the kind of person who needs to write, maybe you bring your own journal, or the back of the bulletin there is left free and blank uh, for you to scratch some notes there. And then we'll have some time of guided prayer, and then uh, every Sunday evening we will uh, end uh, with this same benediction, which is one that I actually uh, uh, quite like a lot. So uh, tonight, as we begin our, our time of Vespers together, let us begin with an invocation, a word of prayer. So let's pray together. Almighty God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, open our eyes, ears, hearts, and very lives to your presence so that today we may worship and serve you in faithfulness, be blessing and healing reminders of your love to all those whose lives we touch. We offer our prayers in the name of Christ. Amen. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. If you will take your hymnal and turn to 506, I will sing my Redeemer and we'll sing the first and last stanzas. Let's, let's stand as we sing.
Our scripture is from Genesis 15, it's 1 through 12, and then 17 and 18. <clears throat> After this, the word, of the, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him, he credited it to him such as, as righteousness. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur, out of the Chaldeans, to give you this land to take possession of it. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, how can I know that I will gain possession of it? So the Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abram brought all these to the him, cut them in two, and arranged the halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abram drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep, and a thick, dreadful darkness came over him. When the sun had set and darkness had fallen, a smoking firepot with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram and said, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. These are words from a prayer journal written by Flannery O'Connor. Dear God, I cannot love thee the way I want to. You are the slim crescent of a moon that I see, and myself is the earth's shadow that keeps me from seeing all the moon. The crescent is very beautiful, and perhaps that is all one like I am should or could see. But what I am afraid of, dear God, is that my self-shadow will grow so large that it blocks the whole moon, and that I will judge myself by the shadow that is nothing. I do not know you, God, because I am in the way. Please help me to push myself aside. Luke chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. <clears throat> At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Would you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. In Christ's name, amen. 
I, I started to think about that it's 2016. Do you still write 2015 on your checks? I sometimes write 2013 on mine. I don't know why. But 2016, it's, it's weird because this year is 10 years that I graduated college, uh, 10 years in the summer that Sally and I have been married, and it's 11 years, weirdly enough, that uh, since Sally and I went on a mission trip uh, in college, first time I ever flew on an airplane, uh, first time I ever saw people who weren't Americans, I think. Um, and we went to this little island off the coast of Madagascar called Reunion. And I remember on our down day, uh, one of them, uh, they told us we were going to go see a volcano. Now, I don't know about you, when somebody told me I was going to go see a volcano, I had in mind, right, it was going to be this mountain that the tip of it reached up into the clouds that you couldn't see and there'd be smoke all around it. And maybe if we were lucky, the ground would shake and it'd spew lava, you know, out of the top. Well, as we were going there, it, it became pretty evident pretty fast that that was not what we were going to go see. And we started driving sort of in this zigzag pattern up this mountain to the point where some of us got a little, little colorless in the face and some of the pictures we look like other people are holding us up. And when we got to the top, we, were, we parked in this parking lot, and there was like a railing and what looked like just a giant cliff off into nothing. And they told us, they said, okay, now we're going to walk down the side of this cliff, down some old wooden steps to the bottom. And so we went down, back and forth on some walkways, steps going down, until we reached the bottom. And, and all around was like a mix of really hard-packed, almost like cement and pea gravel everywhere. And I said, all right, now what? And they said, where are we going to walk? <laughs> About a mile that way. So, oh, that's where the volcano was going to be, right? That's where we were going to see the big mountain. Well, I noticed everybody was kind of walking with a brisk pace. And so I asked, why is everybody in a hurry? A volcano ain't going anywhere. They said, well, the clouds will roll in. And when the clouds roll in, you can't see where you're going. So everybody's trying to get there before the clouds roll in. Well, I'm, I'm kind of slow, and all of our group was kind of slow, and, and the clouds came in, but people were still moving. And it turns out I looked down, and, and on the ground at about, I don't know, two, three foot wide were these white blotches of paint. And I asked Ron, the, the missionary there on the aisle, I said, what are, what are those? He said, well, when the clouds do move in, and sometimes they move in unexpectedly, you can make it to one of those white dots, and look on down the way and see the next one. And then you can go to that one, and you look on down the way, and you'll see the next one. And that's the way to the volcano, which incidentally was not very impressive. We walked all that far, we walked up a little hill, and then there was just another big hole in the ground. And they're like, ta-da, there it is, volcano. I really didn't, I wanted to see red hot magma, right? But I remember that, that kind of stuck with me. The clouds roll in, there's a white dot, you don't get to see all the way. I mean, because I think, honestly, if I had seen all the way and didn't see the volcano in my mind, I probably would have said, ah, it's good enough, we'll turn around, we'll go back, I'll wait in the car, and we can go eat some sandwiches later. But it just let you see from one white dot to the next. It's one of the reasons I like marking time with the church calendar. Looking at Lent, at Advent, the holy days like Transfiguration Sunday, the baptism of the Lord, Pentecost, days that have been around a lot longer than any of us. I like it because it's, it's almost like it's a white dot that helps me see just far enough to the next one. To not see the whole picture, but to just get me far enough to trust that God's going to reveal another dot when I get to that one. I thought about that. And that Old Testament reading that Allison did for us. Strange, isn't it? A strange passage. Abram uh, is, is, is there but, and doesn't know. He says, Lord, what's going to happen? And God says, I'll tell you what, get a bunch of livestock and cut them in half. And lay them out facing one another and let's see what happens. I mean, that's a waste of good meat, right? Cut them in half, lay them out. He's chasing the buzzards away. You get the image, right? Shoo, shoo, birds, get off that stuff. And then the sun goes down and Abram goes into this deep trance and there's a, a fire pot and a torch that passes between the middle of them. A sign of God's covenant. And God takes Abram out before and says, look up at the stars. You'll have just as many descendants as there are stars, if you can count them. We know the story. Abram's old. Sarai, Sarah, she's old. Well beyond child-rearing years. That many? 
There's an old ancient Asian proverb that says, the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. And I wonder if, if God said, well, yeah, there'll be that many, but you've got to start with one. One white dot, looking to the next. And then there's Jesus, in that passage from Luke. Herod's putting the pressure on him, right? We're going to come get you. And I love what Jesus says, tell that old fox. I just, I, 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 mean, I, I have to believe Jesus was the kind of guy you want to hang out with and you want to talk to. Tell that old fox that I'm busy today and tomorrow and, and, and I'm going to be outside of Jerusalem on the third day. You, you can't kill me outside of Jerusalem, but I'm going to be back. The next time you'll see me, he says, is when you will say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. On Palm Sunday. And you know, sometimes I think about the people who said that. They're sitting on one white dot. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. And they don't look down the road. They're trying to get ahead. They're trying to see the volcano. They're trying to get to the end of the road. And just a few days later, their hosannas have morphed into shouts of crucify him. Crucify him. God doesn't let us see the whole picture. Like Flannery says in her journal, Lord, I feel like you're the moon and I'm the earth's shadow that gets in the way. We can't see the whole thing. And it's not because sometimes the fog rolls in and we can do nothing about it. Sometimes it's because we get in the way. So let's take some time now to reflect on the words we've heard from Scripture The words we've heard read to us, the words from Holy Scripture as well, from the homily. Just spend some time in reflection, and then I will come back up and end that time as we pray together in a guided uh, prayer for the church, the church universal, our church, for others, and for ourselves, and then we will close with a benediction. So let us spend some moments now in silent, uh, written reflection.
Now we will enter into a time of prayer. We'll pray, as you see there on your list, or here on the screen as well. First, we pray for the church. You notice that C is capitalized. That's for the church universal, the church here at Williams, the church around the world, the church who calls itself Baptist, the church that may call itself Catholic, Quaker, Pentecostal, or what have you in between. We pray for the church, the mission of God's church around the world, the mission of God's church here at Williams. So this time, let's spend a few moments praying for the church, and I will end that time together with the words, Lord, hear our prayers for the church, and then we will enter into a time when we pray for others, our neighbors, our friends, our family, and I will end that time together by saying, Lord, hear our prayers for others, and then we will enter into a time to pray for ourselves, in which I will end that time by saying, Lord, hear our prayers as we pray for ourselves. Then I will close this with a benediction. So let us pray together. Lord, hear our prayers as we pray for your church. Lord, hear our prayers as we lift up our friends, our neighbors, as we pray for others. Lord, hear our prayers as we pray for ourselves. And have mercy on us, Lord, for we know we are sinners. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen.